my soul doth magnify the Lord. Those are the opening words of probably Appleby's most beloved piece of choral music, The Mag, which is a setting of the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, by the 19th century English composer, the Victorian composer, Thomas Atwood Walmsley part of his evening service, his Magnificat and Nunc Dimittis in D minor. It has become a favorite of Appleby singers and of Appleby students and alumni over many years. I've had the privilege of, of singing and, and conducting it for much of the past 20 years at Appleby, and it is truly a glorious piece of music. It is, in fact, uh, an extraordinary piece of music. Uh, it was uh, not only a, gr a great setting of that ancient uh, hymn of Mary, uh, but it is, in fact, a piece which is uh, filled with uh, dramatic moments, silence, uh, dying away to nothing, and then that amazing uh, Gloria uh, bursting forth at the end, uh, the ways in which it tosses text back and forth uh, between different parts. It was also uh, um, creative and innovative. It was the first modern setting of that, which had, for example, an independent organ part. So the organ, the accompaniment, doesn't simply just mirror what the singers are are doing uh, in terms of music, but in fact complements it and, and contrasts with it and supports it. The Magnificat. It was also uh, among probably Walmsley's greatest composition. Uh, in fact, uh, historians and musicologists have have been amazed. Uh, it is so unlike so much else of Walmsley's music. What was it that inspired him to create this most glorious piece? It's also a piece which speaks to us very definitely now in this particular moment. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pardon, and pardon what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your room and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child that will be born will be holy. He will be the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your world. Then the angel departed from her. This story of Mary, as recorded in Luke's Gospel, the visit of an angel with a message, and her response to that message, resonates with meaning today. Mary is first seized with fear as her world is turned upside down by the appearance of the angel Gabriel with a shocking message from God. She, a poor peasant girl who is unmarried, will have a son who will be the son of God. Yet what is the angel's immediate response to her? Do not be afraid. We ourselves are living in a time of anxiety as the world around us and even our own lives have been altered almost overnight. There is confusion and, indeed, fear. 
But this is not where the story ends. The text of the Magnificat, the song which Mary would soon sing, is one of hope, confidence, and even joy. It expresses hope of a world in which the hungry will be filled with good things. It expresses confidence that the marginalized will no longer be ignored, but will be exalted. In the course of this pandemic, we've seen how it's the essential workers in our society, previously too often poorly paid or even ignored, who are now honored as heroes. And above all, the Magnificat is filled with joy. My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Walmsley's setting of the Magnificat, which we know at Appleby and love, expresses this most effectively. After the restrained quartet, singing of the promises of God through the ages and today, the choir and organ burst forth in an exuberant hymn of praise. Glory be to the Father. Hope, confidence, and yes, joy. The combination of Mary's words and Walmsley's inspired music. Bless the creators, O God of creation, who by their gifts make the world a more joyous and beautiful realm. Through their labors, they teach us to see more clearly the truth around us. In their inspiration, they call forth wonder and awe in our living. In their hope and vision, they remind us that life is holy. Bless all who create in your image, O God of creation. Pour your spirit upon them that their hearts may sing and their works be fulfilling. Amen. <laughs> 